Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting brush hour um, where we are slowly working through my pile of shame. Um, minis I have collected over the years uh, because no matter what role playing game I am playing, uh, minis always look better in the dungeon when they are painted. Uh, last couple of brush hours, we have been painting um, the thief, the thief and the cleric. Um, so I have just kind of a representative mini for DCC. And um, we're going to finish them up today. Uh, we just have the metallics to do. Um, and then we are going to get started on some good old fashioned cloaks uh, with our wizard and elf. Um, while we are, uh, while we're kind of waiting for paint to dry, uh, in addition, I also have a, a couple of frogs that I'm painting for uh, a commission um, because the new Warhammer rule set um has a, a scroll that you can your your wizards can take to turn an enemy character into a frog so i'll be painting those just kind of on and off as um as we're going through um and unlike other times other brush hours where i've ended painting minis with metallics i'm starting because i also remembered to t get a second paint cup um so <laughs> I have two today, uh, one for my normal paints and then one here for metallics because um, our metallic paints, they've got flex of material in them that gives it the shine. So that's why we don't generally want to mix our paint water. Usually you can avoid it if you do metallic second um, or last, I should say, uh, but we're going to be doing them first so we can finish off our um our thief and our cleric. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my paints. Um, I'm still not 100% sold on what I wanna paint the armor on. So if you have any channel points, um, you can go ahead and redeem them. If you've got a metallic color in mind, um, I can do pretty much any sort of metallic color. Um, can't do candy apple red, so don't ask. Um, but uh, for the thief, um, for the, uh, like the little act or the little pick hammer, um, and the shovel, and then the, uh, my little stand in for the mace and the shield, these are going to be, um, these are going to be just dark silver, uh, with a silver highlight. All right. You know what, Nick's that is true. Um, there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of turbo darks that you do have in your case, and that case is not quite within arm's reach, but it's close enough. So fine. If you want color shifting armor on the cleric, you got to spend some channel points for it. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started with um, uh, we're going to get started with some silvers. So I'm just going to shake these up. And um, really what we're going to do is we're just going to use the dark silver and then just pick the edge highlight out with the regular silver. Um, it's gonna be real simple. Um, I may wash it to give it a little bit of extra depth before I put the highlight on, but it's just gonna be real simple since this is a thief. He is an adventurer, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and that means his equipment is well worn and well used. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll maybe get into um, maybe Talking about like scratching it, um, how you can do scratches on your models for any sort of metal. Um, but yeah, so we'll take a gander at that and see what we can do. We'll just go ahead and paint. Hope uh, hope everyone has been having like a nice nice time. Um, hope you if you are if you stuck around. Hope you enjoyed um, in the studio. Um, because um, Brad is a great artist um, and puts all of my mini painting to shame the moment he sets pen to paper. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead, we're going to get started and just paint some happy little shovels over here. So, um, Elena, I have to ask. Did you catch any of the group stage play for Katowice? I'm very sad that Vitality is not in it. 
don't why did you have to hurt me I like actually this? completely I didn't know that they didn't get in um I was I didn't catch all of it and I was like just made an assumption I was like oh I'm sure they got in I would love to say they got in but they lost to Ents and they lost to Heroic and I think that means they're out I think so because I'm pretty sure there's no uh, last chance stage. Yeah. Because I think they're, I think the lower bracket was them against Heroic. Oof. So, um, they're into the spring finals for Blast, though. So, yay. <laughs> there will always be more CS2 tournaments. I know. But my boys. I know, I know. <laughs> well, now you can, now you can root for, um... I don't even know who would be like a joke pick at this point. There's so many teams that I'm like, oh, wait, how did they win? They beat who? Oh, yeah. No, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, man. I got to open up HLTV now. Um, so, look at the brackets. For for those of you that are confused, uh, last <laughs> week, Elena and I both uh, discovered that we watch um, Counter-Strike um, tournaments and... Uh, she's a much bigger fan than I am, mm -hmm. but it's still it was still something we were just chit chatting about, and like one of the biggest tournaments um, started this past week slash weekend. Yeah, the uh, Intel Extreme Masters Catavisa tournament. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna root for Gamer Legion to beat Heroic in the right. lower semifinals of Group B. Okay. I don't think All it's right. gonna happen. But I'm gonna, cause they they lost to Mao's 2-0 today. I did watch that game. So tomorrow they play that um, at 7:30 in the morning. Oh boy, Ooh. I'm gonna watch the rerun of it. <laughs> <laughs> I will be starting my work day at that point. Yeah, um, I'm gonna be asleep. <laughs> what what is what is this sleep? I uh, you know even on it's... like. It's a fabled thing. Oh. Yeah, it's it's fabled. The only reason I call it sleep, it's really just the demons have taken hold. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow is a big day, Nix. I get to I get to remind my wife that she is uh ever looming closer to shuffling off this mortal coil. Oh, lovely. She's uh, uh it's her uh, anniversary of making it around the the, the solar yeah. system. Yep. So we are going to celebrate and uh I don't think she's watching because she's commenting about Grey's Anatomy um in our Discord server. So I um I'm going to let the secrets out. So all right, so we're we're I mean she's she already knows what we're doing um for dinner tomorrow we are going to a local indian restaurant um because indian food is delicious yes it is um but she uh she's got she got one of those birthdays that i would call inconvenient it's it's too close to valentine's day but it's just far enough away that i can't be like happy birth valentine's day um so I um I got her I got her a couple of um actually she probably whispers cuz she can't she is upstairs. Um I got her a couple of um oh uh, what did I get her? I got her a couple of ornaments for our Christmas tree cuz she loves ornaments. Well, she loves decorating for Christmas. Oh, I can hear her. Um and Sorry, this is this is secret. Um but um I also got her a um I got her a stuffed animal. Um so as we have mentioned multiple times. Uh oh, wait. She's up in the kitchen. Never mind. Abort. Abort. <laughs> Abort vision. <laughs> we can't talk about it. So yeah, how about that Falcons team? Woo, wait, the Atlanta Falcons <laughs> wouldn't know. Them. No, 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 no. Oh, CS2, CS2. Yeah. 
forgot that there was a team named Falcons. Yeah. Zonic, Zonic jumped ship from Vitality to there, and so did Magix. Oh, that's where Magix went. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. See, I like Magix. I, I'll, I'll watch Magix oh, play. Oh, I love him so much. He's just, he's so good, and he left Vitality. <laughs> like, I understand. Like, I get it, but... I mean... Mezzi isn't doing terribly, but he's no magics. <laughs> he's hard no, to be it. He's no four four man spray down entry fragger, <laughs> you know, or anchor. It's it's hard to it's hard to replicate the power of a Danish uh CS player. No, you're right. It it's it's insane. <laughs> it and it's crazy. It's crazy to me that you probably like Danish Counter Strike's always been good, and I'm not I'm not gonna knock on that. But it's really funny how like in twenty twenty fourteen or twenty like twenty twelve, twenty thirteen, and twenty fourteen, you would say that about a French player like Kenny S, RBK, Scream, and then now it's just completely flipped the script and now it's just it's all danish all the time like kadian you've got um uh dupree's doing better now that he's on astralis um i think his whole thing was like a lot in his life happened while he was on vitality yeah and it made it i i think it made it very difficult for him to focus um but you know it's i don't know i think the french uh, the French and the, uh, uh, holy crap, um, where is simple, Ukrainian, Yep. seem to have the best snipers. Like, Wonderful is doing very well. He replaced, uh, Simple in the op role for, uh, Navi. Oh wait, is simple is simple Sim- rifling or? Uh, simple has left Navi after. Oh, what? Yeah, after what ten years on the roster? Wow. Yeah. All right, that's 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 a shock. Have you uh, not yes. been watching any of the Navi games? <laughs> no, they play when I'm like oh, not when... around. That's fair. That's fair. Because uh, they're they're like they're like the team that I like will root for if it's someone like i don't have a team but if it's like navi versus like g2 i'm gonna root for navi because i don't like g2's yeah i don't like g2's siege team and that has that has spilled over into um into (laughs) counter-strike i just Um, haven't liked g2 since they've stopped being a french roster (laughs) you know fair um so like i i'll root for navi and, and when they're on and except if they're like going up against um phase but that's just because like there are players on phase that i really liked how can you root against kerrigan that's also true you cannot root against kerrigan you can't it's i think it's in the counter-strike terms of service i i I think so too um but yeah so like usually if phase is playing i'll root for phase um if it's like phase versus navi or phase versus vitality or like vitality versus navi i want to see the full like i want double overtime map yes. like last map like <laughs> thank you thank you people don't understand when i talk about it and like i watch i watch a vitality game and they and i'll sit there and i'll i'll be i'll be like oh man you know i i was really hoping that uh that you know the other team would get more rounds and i'll i have a friend who's just like what do you mean don't you want vitality to just stomp the competition and i'm like yes but i want good counter-strike first <laughs> that's what i want uh so i have a question navi mm-hmm. and falcons are playing by the way if you ever want to uh put on uh counter-strike whenever uh whenever you're doing this outside of uh brush hour mm-hmm. uh youtube has all of the vods you can just okay. watch the streams uh cool, cool. which i do all the time because the catavisa uh, LAN is always stupid o'clock in the morning because it's in Europe. <laughs> yep. So I can't watch it normally. But uh, speaking of it, Falcons or Navi? Are you are you still gonna root for Navi or are you gonna sit there wanting double overtime? Ah, uh, 
I mean, I'll probably want double overtime. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> they are they are in the lower lower final for Group A. Um, Phase and Spirit are upper final. I am I am impressed that Spirit has uh, has moved on through uh, through there and and is in the upper bracket for that. That's crazy to me. Team Spirit used to be doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> To put it nicely. All right. Okay. All right. So. Cool. All right. So she's back. She's back to watching Grey's Anatomy. All right. So. A couple years ago. Um. Disney did a. Um. Disney did a uh, like a. A merch series called like Stitch Crashes Blank. And it was like Stitch Crashes Lady and the Tramp. And so they did a bunch of stuff where um like they would do like special art for like Stitch where he was made out of pasta and meatballs. Um and so they're doing a like Stitch Steals Snacks. Or something like that and it's like classic walt disney park um walt disney world like park snacks um for each month and i got her the one for january which is the mickey ear pretzel i don't know how well that came across on the stream uh, <laughs> it came fit just fine perfect i had to whisper it um, so I got her that as like the main thing of her birthday gift. Um, and then, uh, I got her a shirt to match. That's awesome. Though she kind of already gave herself like the one birthday gift that she really kind of wanted. Mm -hmm. So back in November, I... Uh, called it my midlife crisis, but I went and got my ears pierced. Um, because it's a thing I've always kind of wanted to do, and I couldn't really justify it because for the longest time I was working in an office, or when I was in college, I thought I was going to be a teacher. Um, and so I was like, well, this is like, uh, like 2010 ish. And so I was like, well, that's clearly not going to fly. No school's going to hire a teacher that has, um, uh, no, te no school's going to hire a, te a male teacher that has, um, piercings, same deal for tattoos. Or if I got a tattoo, I'd have to cover it up. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I'm in, I'm hit my mid thirties and I would feel bad buying a car that is too fast for me to drive. Um, um, adultery's never been big on my list, and um, so that really only leaves like very few quote unquote midlife crises or crises, I guess. And so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go get my ears pierced. Well, apparently, that caused her to think, well, maybe I should get a tattoo. So she got a tattoo on Saturday, um, of uh, Steamboat Willie. Nice. Yeah, she got it on her leg. Uh, it looks great, though. She keeps finding, like, little imperfections with it. And I'm like, don't. Stop. <laughs> you said no regrets. Yeah, no regrets. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I did that for myself, uh, I think for my 23rd birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, much to my family's dismay. Um... <laughs> my family's oh, very against goes. my 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 parents are very against tattoos they don't they don't get it um but i uh i got a dragon age tattoo and i i noticed a couple of imperfections when i got it but i i look at it as the as the well this was you know hand drawn one pass no, 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 no take backsies. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I've noticed now that uh, the design that I got was uh, probably not the smartest thing because it's got a lot of tiny line work. So next time I get a tattoo, I'm, I'm not going to do anything with a, a bunch of itty bitty line work in it. That's fair. Because it, uh, as you get older and as the skin or as the ink settles, it thickens the line. So some of the, the arrows coming out of the, the ram's head eyes look, uh, a little less like perfectly straight arrows now, <laughs> <laughs> which is not the fault of the artist. It is strictly the fault of the, uh, like I, I chose a design that had itty bitty pieces of line work. Same thing with, uh, stipple shading. Stipple shading okay. makes it look awesome. It makes like uh, the the metal pieces that are on my like what are supposed to be metal on my tattoo design. It makes it look like it's beaten up and like hammered metal, but mm -hmm. it it's definitely like a lot. Uh, the the worst thing was uh, stipple shading is very difficult to get into the skin properly because it's just uh, a dot. So yeah. some of it came off while it was healing. Uh, not a lot of it, but like there were there were a few pieces here and there that uh, the ink just came right out of the skin, um, and then it it now like some of the some of the stippling has melted together because it's just blown out. But it's again not the artist's fault, so just no no regrets no regret <laughs> no, no regrets no regrets. <laughs> yeah, we um it, they're like they're like kind of really minor things. One of them. Um, uh, one of them she noticed like several hours later, um, yeah. and I didn't have the heart to tell her until af like hours after she had noticed it that I had noticed it when I sent a picture to her parents, Ooh. uh, cause I included, um, I included a gif of Steamboat Willie yeah. and I saw the first imperfection that she saw right then. I was like, no, I'm not telling her. I'm yeah. not telling her. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, um. Yeah, so we're uh, I, I I I had been thinking about getting a tattoo for like the longest time um, before this, and I'm like, well, I might as well. She's gotten one. She didn't die, so <laughs> I I uh. I have no problem with the pain. Like the I didn't because I got mine on my thigh, and everybody mm. was like, oh, the closer you get to like your inner thigh, the the more it hurts because you know your inner thigh is so sensitive, and I'm like. That, no. Like, I didn't feel it. What I felt was the shading. It wasn't until they went back and started doing the shading that I actually started to feel any inkling of pain. Like, them doing the, the outline, absolutely nothing wrong with it. They got into uh, doing the, the star in the center of my, uh, my tattoo and, like, shading it all pure black that it was like, oh, oh my, ah! <laughs> That's, that that kind of hurts. <laughs> so be warned. Uh, it all depends on your pain tolerance. I'm a big baby. <laughs> oh, you're gonna hate it. <laughs> oh, I have a feeling I will. Yeah, if you if, um, does uh, yeah. does getting shots like for uh, for like like the flu shot or whatever really bother you or like having blood drawn when you're at the doctor's? No, I just can't look at it. Okay. Um, like, and that's that's usually. Um, it's like getting flu shots or whatever is fine. I've given blood before. Um, honestly, the only thing that really like squigs me out uh, with that is um, the place that I've gotten blood drawn at the last couple of times for like physicals and stuff. It's like dead silent in the room. And so you hear you hear it entering the vial and I'm just like, I don't I don't need this. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. Um, but no, I, as long as I, as long as I don't look at it, I'm fine. Um, the pain's whatever. I'm sure if I, I looked at it, it would also be fine. It's just, I don't really want to like, look at it. I normally talk to the people when I'm, uh, <laughs> when I'm doing that. So I don't <laughs> hear anything. I'll just, I'll have a full on conversation with the nurse. I don't care. Like you, you have to suffer small talk with me while this is going <laughs> on. So I don't hear that because it's kind of gross. <laughs> taking a a slight break to jump over to some frogs real quick um so i am going to be going back in just a minute to start doing the um armor on the cleric 
So if somebody has a weird color that they would like to redeem for the cleric, do so now. Um, you've got like uh, two minutes. So it's 9.25 by my clock at 9.27. The color will be normal. So what have you been thinking about getting for a tattoo? So um, I've gone back and forth um, for years, uh, depending upon like where I was at in life. Um, I wanted to get one when I graduated uh, that was like a tribal bald eagle, um, which is great when you think about it. Uh, because like it was in like kind of, and I, I thought about getting it also after my dad passed away. Cause my dad, um, his high school mascot was an Eagle. Uh, when we were young, he would, um, he like, he would, he would like sign like arcade cabs, um, with like bald Eagle, uh, when he'd get a high score. And so I thought about doing that with some symbolism for um, from the fraternity that I was in, whose like mascot was also an eagle. Um, decided to not go through with it because I kind of think tribal tattoos look dumb. Um, like when it's something like that, I think there's a lot of artistry that can be like within that tattoo style. But I was just like, nah, not on me. Um, and then around like 2015, 2014, 2015, I think. Um, I, um, I had, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I had helped develop like a tabletop, um, skirmish game with some friends and, um, it's Final Fantasy themed, like Tactics Ogre themed. And yeah. so there's crystals as like a huge motif throughout the game. And, um, the, um, my thought was to get the, the crystals in the different colors that we had and um uh get the date of the that we um uh, we completed the game at and released it um i think what my current one is is in that kind of traditional american style um and um do a monster that i created for the first uh dcc zine that i wrote um which is this like rat made of vines mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, have it like clutching or like curled around a, a D20. So that's what my current idea is. Nice. All right. So Nick says gold. All right. Um, let's see. What kind of golds do I got to wake with? Oh, I got bright gold. But yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, oh, wait, I got bright gold and I got rich gold. Shade highlight. What other golds do I have? Yeah, I've been uh, I've been debating what my next tattoo is going to be because my problem is is that all my tattoos are going to be expensive because I can't go small. <laughs> I don't. What What is a small tattoo? What do you mean? Like you know, half the size of my arm? Like <laughs> I think my my first tattoo cost me four hundred and fifty bucks. I think in total. Okay. Um, but the the one that I'm really dead set on getting right now. So everything that I've done or had thoughts on is all Dragon Age related. And I still want to do that. And I think I want to do that. Like my, I think I'm going to do a half sleeve at some point maybe of it. Um, but I want to do, I want to do a, uh, a tattoo on my arm that is, uh, on my forearm is like a lamppost. With mm -hmm. like a like light coming like a light source coming off of it, and then above that, I want to have um, three of my favorite moths. Uh, so the Luna moth, the uh, I forget what the um, I forget how to pronounce it, but it's a uh, it starts with a C. It's a brown moth that's got like uh, red and gold, and it's like Capercia or something like that. I and probably butchering how how it's pronounced a death's head hawk moth uh and then somewhere hidden is mothman <laughs> perfect incredible and, no notes <laughs> yeah just just mothman is somewhere uh, amongst the tattoo and i'd love to i'd love to do that um i reached out to an artist 
last year and they were like, oh, we're taking out, uh, you know, we're, we're taking uh, names down for a waitlist in March. And they asked me for references and I sent them like eight pictures of moths and then like so here's like some ideas of like how mothman could look i said i'm not dead set on any kind of art style i kind of want you guys to have fun with it and uh i never heard back so <laughs> i'm gonna find somebody else um but that's that idea but like my dragon age idea that i want to do is all of the choices that i've made uh throughout so like the uh what i wanted to do was on my shoulder um, like the rounded part of my shoulder, I wanted to do the circle, uh, the Magi circle cracking apart. Like, uh, it's a statue that's like breaking and cracking open and mm -hmm. then have like different symbols of like different factions that I've worked with and, uh, and different, um, like, cause my, my tattoo that was on my thigh was originally going to be on my shoulder, but I put it on my thigh because I'm like, I want to be able to look at it. And what if I never get another tattoo? I'm never going to be able to see it. <laughs> You know, that's that's a perfectly valid reason. Yeah. I think, honestly, I'll probably never get a back tattoo strictly for the fact of I can't see it. Like, forget everybody else who can see it. I want to see the art. Clearly, <laughs> you're for me. Clearly, you need to get a Yakuza-style tattoo, but of, of the various moths. Yes! Just full back tat. Like. <laughs> oh my god, yes! That would be amazing. <laughs> Or just cryptids. <laughs> yeah. Yakuza-style cryptid back tattoo. There we oh, go. Oh, I would love that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be amazing. My parents would hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, like, my my mom is, is old-fashioned enough that when I told her that my wife was getting a tattoo, she just, like, cringed and recoiled. And it's like, <laughs> come on. Yeah. It's not even your kid. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, when my grandmother saw my tattoo, she just looked at me because she didn't know what it was from. So she just uh -huh. sees this ram skull with like uh, the like metal scales behind it, mm -hmm. uh, like measuring scales, and uh, and and she looks at it and she just goes, "I'm gonna pray for you." <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh. like, Grandma, it's not Satan. I swear, it's got nothing to do with the devil. You're like, I just do Twitch production for the Devil Company. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's the funny thing is, I don't think she ever had anything. I don't think my my dad uh, ever had anything said by his mother about D&D. Uh, &D. Like, I don't think he went <laughs> through uh, his, the, the whole, you know, oh, that that's just, uh, you know, devil magic. Like, the, the, the scare. Like, that, that was... I don't think, I think his mom just always was like, oh, he's just playing pretend. He's fighting bad guys. It's like, it was no different than, uh, than watching those old Knights movies to her. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. My, my dad never had, my dad only had a problem with it when he thought I was like wasting my time. And I was like, well, all right, that's fair. Yeah. Um, but when I was in, I don't know, seventh or eighth grade. Uh, I tried to get one of my best friends, who was a year behind me, into Dungeons and Dragons. We played. He, I, I got him to play one session before he came back and was like, "Hey, man, my my mom and dad said I can't play Dungeons and Dragons." I was like, "Well, why not?" He's like, "I was like, it, it's not like Satan, is it?" <laughs> and he's like, "No, you're creating a character, so that's like creating a person, and that's like playing God." And it's like oh. beliefs like i'm not i'm not here to besmirch anyone's beliefs but i was like at like 12 i was like well that's a silly reason <laughs> yeah that's the like heaven forbid they ever saw the sims games yeah right that's talk about playing god <laughs> so no he we we still ended up playing we just couldn't do it we had to do it at school <laughs> yeah yeah uh where his parents would never find out well, it's kind of funny because my generation's uh, uh, devil worshiping scare was Harry Potter. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I'm like I'm I mean that that vein too. I mean, I, first book came out and I was like same age. Mm -hmm. like, I think Daniel Radcliffe's got a um, like a year on me. Yeah. So. I yeah, also... I grew up watching those. Like I think I was 
I think I was about 11 or 12 when the first movie came out. So it's like I've, I grew up watching those movies and like hearing all of the like satanic panic around uh, around. And I, I remember having very Christian uh, friend, like friends with like very Christian families uh, were like, oh, I can't watch the movie or I can't. Uh, I can't read the books. And they would, like, sneak the books at the local <laughs> library. They would, like, go to the local library with me just so they could read Harry Potter because they couldn't take it home. That's great. Yeah, it was it was so funny. And, again, just, like, my mom or my dad's parents were with him. Like, they didn't think anything of it. My dad just looked at it and he goes, oh, yeah, no, like, magic? That's no different from Lord of the Rings. It's just, you know, different form of wizardry. <laughs> I just think it's I think it's so funny. It's like I'm I, I I'm not gonna judge anybody for, for how they believe, but I, I find it amusing. <laughs> I like to find what is the logic behind it? What is making you think that? Yeah. It, it's that's a there's a lot of things in in this world that I'm like but why? <laughs> It's only game. <laughs> it's only game. Why you have to be mad? Yeah. You know, I didn't think this gold was going to work, but I think it will. Especially with that cream. Yeah. There are a couple of, like, Civ games, Nyx, um, or Civ, like, 4X kind of style games where you... Um, you play as like a literal deity. I think there was one that was all about the Greek pantheon. Um, there was also that one where it was not a specific pantheon, but it was like, I think it was called Black and White. Mm, that sounds familiar. Yeah, and you could be like a. Uh, I think you had the choice of being basically like a benevolent deity to these um, to these meeples, um, or you could be a you know, an angry and vengeful one. I just remember playing Caesar. Like the the Sim City, but make it Rome. Oh, did, I don't even re I don't remember that at all. Oh, I uh, I found Caesar three on Steam, and every now and then, <laughs> when I'm feeling nostalgic for my childhood, I'll boot it up, and it's. Really bad Windows 98 graphics, but hey, <laughs> it's what we had back then. I remember booting it up on my dad's uh, secondary work computer. like Because I don't remember why he had two computers in his office. Uh, but he had the one that he did all of his blueprints on. And then I guess the one that I was using at the in the front secretarial area, if you want to call it that. Because he had like a... He, w he worked out of this trailer that he was renting from uh, a buddy of his that worked in the trailer next to him on the same property. And if I was, I would go, uh, if dad would pick me up from school, I would go and watch uh, at, at Jimmy's trailer. I would go and sit in Jimmy's like second office chair and I'd sit at the TV and Jimmy would just let me like eat my snacks and, and drink my soda and watch uh, Yu-Gi-Oh on four kids. Uh, on basic cable. <laughs> so I'd Heck watch yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, and then once those were over and I didn't want to watch anything else that was coming on, I'd give the remote back to uh, to Jimmy, and I'd be like, all right, see you, Jimmy, and I'd run back to my dad's house, and I'd boot up his, uh, his computer, and I'd either get on Neopets, <laughs> or I'd play Lemonade Tycoon, uh, because back then, uh, Windows games were free. <laughs> Okay. Or I'd get on Yahoo, play Bookworm, or I'd boot up Caesar, because uh, my dad had a copy of it at his office for lunch breaks or whatever. And so like <laughs> I'd boot up Caesar, and I'd sit there and I'd just play these dumb games on uh, <laughs> on my dad's like crappy Windows ninety eight computer <laughs> or Windows was it ninety eight XP I guess. Let's see, we had let's see, there was ninety five, ninety eight. M E then, Millennium Edition. Yeah. Which boy, talk about a piece of trash operating system. Oh, don't even and, think about Windows Vista then. <laughs> oh, I I actually 
I used Vista. Um, I used Vista at work and um, on my home computer for like six years, and it was it was all right. <laughs> like, uh, Windows I, Seven I vastly, and Windows Vista were awful for me. I vastly preferred um, XP over it, like using it, but like I never had any of the problems that everyone else around me had with Vista. It was so terrible it was... on a Chromebook. Let's just put it that way. Oh yeah, well, most things were. Some sort of Captain Crunch game where you raise some sort of weird little monster. I remember that. Yes. I also remember playing um, like those those computer games. You'd get CD-ROMs in uh, cereal boxes. Mm -hmm. And they had like a Disney promotional one. And I am so angry. My parents threw out Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo. Ugh. I'm so mad. <laughs> So I bought it on Steam for like two bucks. <laughs> it's the best. And you're like, wow, I remember this game. It's it's not good. It's great when you're like, you know, three, but <laughs> but I I I'm gonna go back one of these changed. days. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go back one of these days. I'm gonna try to find a way to play the jump start games because I want to experience them as an adult because I remember playing <laughs> the heck out of those jump start like second third fourth fifth grade like whew. put put saves the zoo is a fiercely speed run game that doesn't surprise me i um so so my my father-in-law does a little bit of or did for a while did a little bit of voice acting on the side and one day as a gift um before we got married uh my wife girlfriend at the time gave me a copy of a game called Adam's Venture. Um, this is a puzzle-ish game um, that can only be described as what if Indiana Jones was more of a biblical scholar than <laughs> just a historical scholar? <laughs> I'm listening. And... Oh yeah, yeah. Um, these games are available on Steam um, and the Nintendo Switch um, because the company that made them uh, just like puts them out onto everything. Um, ah, so it's like Bethesda <laughs> <laughs> in Skyrim. Yeah, but it's not buggy. Um, <laughs> so times were simpler back then. Okay. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Um, so these games are basically entirely voiced by my father-in-law that's amazing um it's like i streamed it a couple years ago uh because i, I was i wanted to play it and because i thought it was just hilarious um like the basic premise the controls are awful the puzzles are easy um but we were keeping a running tally on my obs um overlay of every different character we came across that he voiced um and he basically voiced everyone that was not a female character mm -hmm. um like he voiced um he voiced the germans that are in this because like i said it's like what if indiana jones was a biblical scholar um he voiced adam he voiced adam's dad he voiced like another random british guy and he voiced the villain. And it's just like, every time we'd just be introduced to a like any character, an NPC, a named character, voiced by my father-in-law. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is he makes for a great dungeon master. Oh, he's he is he is an incredible dungeon master. Um he um for uh for Nix's birthday, um he actually drove out to our place and he ran a little little D&D one shot for us um and like he's got voices all over the place um he's uh genuinely like a great dm in terms of like craft helping the, you know crafting a story working with like whatever insane idea that we come up with um and also knowing when to say mm, not yes and but how about you know, like, not just enthusiastically saying yes to everything, but just kind of reining some of our crazy ideas in mm -hmm. while not just outwardly denying them. Um, yeah. 
uh, he is basically one of the few reasons why I will still play 5e. Um, because at that point, I'm not there for the mechanics of the system. I'm there for the story and the people around the table. Yeah. Yeah, he hits us with no but a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's great DM. I I like to do the, uh, whenever I have, like, a table that has, like, crazy ideas, I just kind of go with it. Uh, it. I either go with it if it's not that bad, or I go, okay, give me a reason why your character would do that. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I that's what I like to hit it with is the I don't care if that's what you want to do because I'm all for give me all the ideas you have but tell me why why would your peasant decide that he knows how to make a Molotov cocktail Well you see uh have you done father... this before <laughs> <laughs> Uh frequently do you remember the cow fire or the fire that burned down half the village and we blamed on a cow That was my first <laughs> Molotov all right, fine. You know what? Cool. <laughs> give me give me a couple minutes to figure out what I'm going to roll for damage. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's great DM. Um I'm uh, I'm trying to get him to try Oh god, I t t I don't know if I can tell him about Grebo. Um but no, I'm I'm trying to get him to try other systems. Um not because I think that like my own personal biases of 5e aside. I think he would like enjoy pretty much any system that we can get him to run. I... Do we talk about Grebo? I thought we didn't talk about Grebo. <laughs> Dad, or is that it. just Bruno? Uh... Oh, it is just Bruno. Now I'm gonna get that stuck in my head. Thanks. <laughs> it's been stuck in my head, so you know. Uh, you just gotta share the torture. I see how. Absolutely. It is. <laughs> um. <laughs> so. So we are uh, one of one of his friends. Um, uh, it's she's a friend of basically like my my wife and my in laws. Um, they did a bunch of community theater together. Um, she was curious about Dungeons and Dragons. Says, "Hey, you know, I've always you know curious to play. I know you you run it and you play it. You know, can you can we play? You know, like can you you know?" So we spun up a game and did some world building. And I have made the most disgusting little goblin um, imaginable. Um, I mean, he's like dirty disgusting. Um, I, I, he would be like if Stitch had worse bathing tendencies and green skin. Um, so I'll, some of the weird mannerisms is like he'll pick his own nose with his tongue. Um, he doesn't really care about, like, any of the NPCs, like, personal space. Um, so if they're trying to admonish us, he'll just, like, get closer and say, like, okay, so, but, like, how does that really impact us? Um, and I just dive into this voice where it sounds like I just have a mouthful of phlegm and I haven't seen a Kleenex in a decade. And he is the most chaotic little goblin to play. It's so much fun. Because I'm guaranteed to, like, make someone, like, spit their drink in laughter. <laughs> I've just got uh, a bunch of murder hobos. <laughs> and one of them is a pixie because I decided I decided to let them play homebrew class if they want. Like, just... Mm -hmm. Have fun with it. So we've got a pixie in our group, and she's hilarious because she'll shrink down uh, to, like, you know, being about three inches tall. And she'll sit around the barbarian's shoulder and talk smack to the NPCs <laughs> so that they get mad at the barbarian. <laughs> and pick fights. <laughs> And she did it once and almost got them in trouble, but she decided to use uh the the cantrip light on like this bar stool or whatever that the, the barbarian was holding. <laughs> and so she just blinded the heck out of these guys that, that she just riled up so that they could steal the money off of the card table and take off out of the tavern. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'm like 
you guys are gonna kill me. <laughs> They've kicked over like bathtubs that are grimy and like full of nasty, musty water just to find a dead body and then go through and go, is there anything on the dead body? I'm like, no, he died taking a bath. He's naked. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Nix, you say I do a lot of wild stuff as Grebo, but none of it is jumping to mind right now. <laughs> That's the worst part, is, like, you know you've done some silly stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. But when do you do so much silly stuff that you forget? <laughs> I, I've insulted several NPCs as him um, for, like, one of the one NPC just randomly, like, had a lisp, and um, <laughs> my character, uh, Grebo, mocks him relentlessly for it. Um. Part of the reason is is because there is a halfling in that NPC's retinue um, who's like his second in command and um, she uh, sounds like she's been a pack-a-day smoker for 35, 40 years um, and Grebo is enamored with her. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, yeah. I mock him because he's a jerk. The lisp is just there. The lisp just makes it easier. Yeah. What class is Grebo? So it's 5e, um, and I wanted to play something that I hadn't played in 5e yet, so I am playing an artificer. Ah. Um, and I'm playing the artillerist. So um, in the world we had, when we were doing like some collaborative world building, we had kind of s said, hey, gunpowder works for big things, because it's like a uh, like a magnitude of um, like precision, like it's a lot easier to get gunpowder that's effective and won't just blow up in your face when you're dealing with large amounts of it, which is weirdly enough kind of how we figured it out in real world. I didn't know that until like two months later when I was looking up the history of gunpowder. Um, but because of that, I was like, well, I want to play this little goblin that comes from nowhere, who's smart and... Um, People are going to just assume he doesn't know what he is or doesn't know anything because he's a little goblin, but he's going to be the one to figure out how to make gunpowder work at small levels. And um, so far, it has not gotten him into trouble, but it has made him some lucrative business deals with the uh, the Black Powder Guild. So, nice. Yeah. I have... Uh... We have a wizard who's multi-classing as an artificer. So okay. he has these thunder gauntlets <laughs> now Perfect. that basically all he does is chuck like fire spells and then he like, and then it, if people get too close, he's got the thunder gauntlets to pow pow, <laughs> but he's awful with the thunder gauntlets because he's a wizard. <laughs> so he doesn't really have any strength. <laughs> I um, I've been contemplating asking my father-in-law if I can just play a DCC wizard oh, in Five yeah. E. Just be like, just, just tell me, don't, don't worry about anything. I will run the class. I will follow. Like, don't worry about the rules. But just let me just play this. I let me spell burn and just drop a fireball like on these crazy, crazy monsters. And I haven't brought it up yet because, well, um. The next campaign, my wife's uh, that we're gonna do. My wife's playing a wizard, and so I didn't want to bring that option up yet. Yeah. Um, so that would be a lot of fun. I know. I like well, do the do the spell rolls for it too. So like, oh yeah, your spells absolutely. have different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, which is why I would just be like, you know, just just don't worry about it. I'll provide you all of the information so you have it. But like, yep. I'll run it. Um, because I I once played in a, a role playing game. Um, when I was like, I don't know, 16 or 17, um, a, um, a priest, this is, <laughs> story starts off a little weird. Uh, so, so, um, I, my family, um, when I was younger did not have like all of, you know, didn't have the greatest in terms of funds and money. So we relied heavily on. Um, community meals so we would go to churches several nights a week uh and um have like 
meals with other members of the community put on by the church. Um, well, one church was an Episcopalian church in our city. And one day I had brought um, some magic cards with me because uh, I was working on, I had, you know, saved my money up and I was working on a, a new Magic the Gathering deck. And the priest walks over and he's like, oh, what you got there? I told him and he and I chit-chatted for a little bit and he told me that he played Dungeons and Dragons and he and my dad had done some like volunteering stuff together. And so my dad was, a, you know, dad knew he was a cool dude and the fact that he shared interests like, Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, no, you know, no big deal. So he invites me to his home game. It's like two of his longtime friends, um, his uh, sister-in-law, his son, and then me, like the random person from outside <laughs> of, of this little like family unit. And um, after their like campaign had ended, he starts running it and he goes, make a character, level one. And we were we were like, in what? And he goes, you heard me. Make a character in level one. I'm like, all right. So uh, when it came time to play, um, I had made a, I'd made like this infiltrator spy explosives expert using D20 modern rules. Um, one of my friends uh, joined us. He made an abjuration wizard in third edition dungeon or 3.5 Dungeons and Dragons. Um, his uh, son and his sister-in-law both made characters from Ritz. And he was ran great. Um, real life ended up getting in the way, uh, and he had to start focusing on some other things, so the game died. But, like, when we were there playing and he was running it, it was fantastic. Um, so I, th I, think, I think my father-in-law is very easily on that same level of um, DM that he could probably handle a singular wizard that might be more powerful in terms of spells, but is going to die to a stiff breeze, especially with the way combat in 5e works out. <laughs> so I'm going to let the wash that I just put on that cleric um, dry up, and I'm going to go back to working on this frog. I don't know what I'm going to paint the frog's eyes, though. Probably like golden yellow. Maybe just black. <sighs> so I didn't get to finish reading the article. But is there like a meetup to watch Dragon Slayer tonight? And it's like a local thing? Or... I think you might be muted there's there's a meetup to watch dragon slayer yeah okay so i was let me let me bring this up on my monitor other monitor real quick yeah a stiff breeze rolls through save versus death all right so uh is it goodman games come on i go to this website often enough don't don't suggest google suggest goodman games there we go um so there was a Oh, it's a, let's see. The annual Goodman Games Creative Retreat is happening in San Francisco. Ah, bummer. All right. Got to be in San Francisco. I can make a flight there, right? It'll start, you know, the movie will be done by the time I get through airport security. But yeah, I guess, um, I guess there's um, a screening of Dragon Slayer that a bunch of um, Goodman Games people are going to be at. And that starts at 8.30 local time, which would be like 11.30 for us. I did not know. Yeah. I only saw it when I went to go like double check the This Week on Twitch post. I was like, I'm sure, I, I'm pretty sure I have brush hour tonight. Let me go check the website just to make sure. And then like two minutes later, I got the Zoom link for tonight. <laughs> I was like, oh, duh. Of course I am. I mean, to be fair, uh, uh, I I may work for this company, but uh, I don't really look at the blog <laughs> that right. often because I don't really need to. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Hmm. 
never seen that film. Maybe I'll go check it out elsewhere. Speaking of, oh man, I sound like like I'm really jumping topic to topic tonight. But, um, well, now Goblin of Guy Gaxanor, it sounds like I need to go to Walmart when the stream's done. Um, but um, that is an did amazing. You... It's amazing a great name. name by the name, by the way. Yeah. Yes. What you what were you saying, Tom? I'm sorry. Goblin of Gut no, Caxton or is incredible. Just... <laughs> um did um did you get a chance to catch Godzilla minus one? No. Dang it, no. I uh, haven't. <laughs> you may have missed your chance. That's at fine. I'll the... I'll watch it later. Um don't watch it in color. Oh, um, so, uh, Nix and I went and saw what we thought was going to be the last showing of Godzilla Minus One in color. Mm-hmm. And it turned out to be one of the first showings of Godzilla Minus One Minus Color. And that movie is incredible in black and white. All right, you've convinced me. I mean, I, I everyone that I've talked to about that film in general has said it's incredible, but they all saw it in color. Yeah. And... Um, it's like, it's powerful, it's emotional, Godzilla do atomic breath, <laughs> Godzilla so do atomic breath, that, <laughs> that is, you, you, that's all you needed to say. Right? Like, I have, <laughs> I, I joke, I have a very low bar when it comes to, like, what I consider a good Star Wars film. Yeah. Um, which puts me at odds with a lot of Star Wars fans. Uh, but my bar for, like, good Godzilla film, also really low. Uh, it has to be about the people, and I gotta see the I gotta see the atomic breath, <laughs> like, and it has to look cool. Um, but yeah, the um, it as Nick says, the black and white kind of made it feel more authentic. Um, the like I was worried going in that it was like oh they just like took the saturation out and um, and it was you know it would be a really bad film. But they went through and, like, digitally relit everything, working with, like, actual photographers, um, so that it looks like it was filmed in black and white. Um, so, and it's it's such, like, an incredibly heavy film that um, I was uh, was reading a an interview with the director, and he said that, like, the people working on the film were finding it that it was much more, like, horror than the color version so um if you can see it see it and if you can see it in color absolutely nice or sorry in black and white yeah um yeah it's so good i want to watch uh i want to watch it so bad because i i've been craving a good godzilla movie because i love I don't know, I just, I love those old kaiju movies. Like, you know, oh, yeah. Gamera is ridiculous, and I love Gamera, and I love Mothra, and I've got, um... <laughs> so, I don't really, like, I've got a couple of them. Uh, or I've got one, and I've got another statue coming, but, like, you know the, the U2's brand uh, mm -hmm. stuff? Well, um, they had a Godzilla and Mothra plush on their website not too long ago. Uh, like, probably around October or November they had them in stock. Or, like, pre ready for pre-order. And I, I have never ordered a plushie so fast in my life. So, sometime this month, I'm getting a Mothra plush. <laughs> and I'm so excited. I got a thing for moths. I don't know. Moths I don't cool. know why. Like... like like, butterflies are cool, moths are cooler. Yeah. Like, I've got, like, I've got a Mothman onesie, I've got a Mothman plushie, I've got a ton of Mothman stickers. Granted, the Mothman stickers in the onesie I got for, for uh, Christmas from my roommate, because my roommate knows me very well. I also have a bumper sticker that's that says, Mothman is real, we made out, and he's a gentle and caring lover. I have seen those before. I want, like, I want to get another one of those stickers to actually put on my car so I have this one preserved and it doesn't get nasty in the weather. <laughs> it's incredible. And, 
<laughs> Nick says we all know goths are cool. Moths are just bo goth butterflies. It's true. <laughs> I've also got a Sasquatch, or Sasquatch, a uh, little uh, statue that sits amongst all my gaming statues that I have. <laughs> did you did you hear that they may have kind of solved Sasquatch? Oh no, I haven't. Um. Uh, apparently, um, bears when they are out and about and walking on their hind legs look suspiciously. Like Sasquatch. Fake news. <laughs> don't believe. Don't believe it. <laughs> nah, that's just what they're trying to hawk at you. Yeah, of so course. So we stop yeah. talking about the real Sasquatch. <laughs> They've got him in a lab somewhere. We got to break him out. You know what? If you can find that lab, I'll help. <laughs> it's in Area Fifty One. What do you mean? Oh man, we just I... didn't find it when we stormed it doing the Naruto run before. I was gonna say all I got was an arrest. <laughs> they can't arrest us all, but they did arrest me. <laughs> Ain't Sasquatch is just gourds really prone to back talk. <laughs> Sasquatches. <laughs> I hate how good that is. Let me get a mod to time Nick's uh, out. <laughs> no, that's uh, it's it's good. I can't. I'm the it. mod. What do you mean? I know. It's, I'm not I doing wasn't. it. <laughs> I'm here for this. This is what I live for. Okay. That's, that's right, a very that's sad existence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I think the cleric's done. I think I think he's good, and I think our thief is good. He's been done for a while. He's yeah. just kind of been chilling. All right, um, let's set those. Actually, you know what? I need. Uh, I need. I'm gonna deal with his base later. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna do a whole nother brush hour stream on basing, but I am gonna just paint that later. See, All Nix, right. what you don't realize is SAD is an acronym for sassy and dangerous. I can't argue with that. <laughs> I, I I you know, that sounds that sounds factually correct. <laughs> um let's see. I think I'm going to start on the wizard because I need something bright and the elf is just going to be in forest colors anyways. So we're going to go with some reds and for the robe. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to paint some orange for this uh, other frog that I've got. All right. Uh, yeah, so I think we'll do some burnt orange as our base. Uh, on the uh, robes, and then we'll kind of work our way up to the red. Is that burnt sienna earlier? Ah, that was burnt sienna. You know, what? we want more vibrant, so we'll go with the. Um, I'll go with the burnt orange. And then I want regular orange for this poison arrow frog or poison dart frog. So I'm going to get a little bit of that out. And then red. And while I'm thinking about it, uh, golden brown for the eyes. So I missed the start of In the Studio with Brad tonight. Um, what was he, what was the skeleton for that he was working on? Uh, the Hell Pits of Thracia. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. That's a great name. I know, right? <laughs> this is almost where I kind of wish I used the Citadel. Um... Actually, wait a second. Oh, <laughs> heck yes. Uh, I was about to say, this is where I wish that I had used the uh, Citadel, or I had some of the Citadel uh, base paints. Um, because... Um, so, their base paints are uh, really good at initial coverage. They're a little bit more pigmented. Um, they are a bit of a pain, because I have to paint from the pot with them. Um, 
So actually what I'm going to do is got a little scooping sculpting tool. So if I put some onto my palette, then I should, whoops, frog down. I don't know where that sculpting tool is, but here's an actual palette knife. So go ahead and just get some of this out. I'm just going to put that onto my palette. And that way I can thin it while still getting that all that like extra pigmentation that I need and want. Yeah, I'm with uh, Nyx on this. We need to get you a pipette. I had pipettes. They clogged because they're a pain to clean. Um... How about a really tiny metal spoon that's, like, really long? That might work. All right. So I'm just going to set that into my uh, metallic paint water, and we're going to come back and start putting down some red. When I was showing off this wizard last week, I hadn't dry brushed the... Um, um, I hadn't dry brushed the gray onto him yet, so I was like, oh, there's a ton of folds that'll work really well for, like, blending and cloaks. Not as many as I thought. Oh, no, I had disposable ones, but I only had, like, two, so I had to reuse them. Um, the disposable pipe bats. But yeah, so I really wanted to kind of show off, like, blending cloaks and stuff, but it's going to work better on the on the elf. And all we're really kind of looking to do with this is, like the type of paint su um, suggests, we're just looking to get a good base coat. Something kind of middle of the road so we can um, work our, our low lights and our highlights with pretty decent coverage. Because red over black, generally, is going to take a bunch of coats. So if we can get a good base down then everything will go easier on top. So, I have no idea what made me think about this. I think it's the red paint, but... Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> have you seen John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness? Um, I have not. It's the one about um, the investment broker... Or not... I guess investment broker is, is right. Um, having to uh, go after a writer who's gone missing hmm. and crazy Lovecraftian shenanigans ensue is the best way I can describe it without giving it away. Okay. I mean, that tracks. I mean, Mouth of Madness. I would assume some Lovecraftian shenanigans. Yeah. It it's reminds me. A 1994 movie. Okay. It does remind me. I need to watch um, Nicolas Cage's Color Out of Space. It's been on my list to watch. I want to watch it real bad. <laughs> I just, one, I love Nicolas Cage. And two, who doesn't love a good Lovecraft adaptation? Right? I mean,. The thing is incredible, so. Yeah, that's, uh, In the Mouth of Madness is apparently, um, a part of that, like, loosely, um, uh, what's the word for it? Uh. Related? Yeah, thank you. Words escape. No problem. Um, <laughs> loosely related, uh, series, like, there's apparently, like, three, Apocalypse, I think, is what like Wikipedia or IMDb was calling it. It's like the Apocalypse movies that John Carpenter did. So it's like the huh. thing in the Mouth of Madness, and I forgot what the third one is. I hope it's something like really innocuous. I have the power of Google. I can just look it up. <laughs> so
Prince of Darkness is the other one. Okay. You know what? That tracks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. A movie called Prince of Darkness about the apocalypse? Oh, yeah, sure. Yep. I don't know yeah, what I'm... It's, uh, so the thing is the first one, uh, Prince of Darkness, and then In the Mouth of Madness, uh, is what John Carpenter himself calls the Apocalypse Trilogy. Okay. I will have to check those out, because I love the thing. Mm-hmm. It has probably got to be my favorite horror movie ever made. It's definitely up there for me. It did not even make... When you think about it, like, the the thing when it, uh, when it, it made money in the box office, it only made $4.9 million over its budget. It was a it uh, $15 million budget and $19.9 million at the box office, which is interesting because uh, you're supposed to, like, at least double yeah to just basically break even as far as like what hollywood considers a profit in box office gains so yep. that's really interesting because it's, it's like it's one of the most highly regarded movies like in the in the sci-fi horror genre i i agree it's a very cheery end they share a drink and yeah it's great <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'm going with this cloak. Uh, thoughts on let's see how well does that come up on the camera? Um, thoughts on the like centerpiece here it looks almost like a tabard going up the center, um, as well as the sort of like inner dress tunic part of this old wizard. Um, the cloak out. I, admit, I I think I just painted Santa. <laughs> You did a little bit. Yeah. I I think I just painted Santa. Well, that might answer this. That might solve that question then. Oop. I knew I shouldn't have picked the wizard with the long beard. That seemed most classic. I might have gotten a little distracted in this Wikipedia rabbit hole, but <laughs> that's um, all right. <laughs> but so Carpenter queried the audience after uh, a market research thingy uh, screening, and one of the audience members asked, "Well, what happened in the very end? Which one was the thing?" And Carpenter responded, "It was up to their imagination." That audience member goes, "Oh God, I hate that." <laughs> <laughs> that's what makes it so good. <laughs> Dumb audience member. Man. Two people saying it's giving Santa. Is it, the adjective beardy or beardly? Um, it depends. Yes. Are, we, <laughs> are we talking like complimentary or derogatory? Yes. <laughs> it's the only way beardy, to respond to that. Yep. Because beardy is how I would describe certain war gamers. Beardly. I don't know if I'd call him. I don't know if I'd call anyone beardly. Maybe just bearded. That's it. Next time I see my brother, I'm just gonna go up to him and be like, "You look very beardly today." <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what he says. It's giving Santa. Santa gives presents. Presents give way to future. It's all very complex. <laughs> it is. Um. I. I. I was not expecting um, stock market advice here uh, tonight <laughs> on Brush Hour. <laughs> Old wizards are beardly. That's not up for debate. You're right, you're right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I don't know. Uh... I... It's really, it's really when you turn him around that he goes, oh, that's just Santa. Yeah, from the back, it could be anyone. Yeah. This could be Joan Crawford, for all I care. 
Yeah, exactly. You turn it around, the big old beard is just like, oh, that's just skinny Santa. Yeah. That's malnourished Santa. <laughs> this is uh, this is um, April thirteenth. Like you know, a couple months out, doesn't have to start getting ready. It's hitting the beach. I gotta say, this Frostgrave mini is like probably one of the closest things I've one of the closest minis I've come across that really just kind of gives old school D and D wizard vibes. Maybe if I darken the red, it would lead to less fancy polish or Polish Polish Santa figurine. Okay. Um, yeah, I could probably actually darken the red. Or That's... then do you just become my bloody Santa Claus? I could. Though we are in February, it would have to be my bloody Valentine Santa Claus. My bloody Santa Claus, my Valentine? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to receive flowers from, from that Santa. Yeah. That's kind of like I, receiving flowers uh, from Krampus. <laughs> you probably I'm, should say thank you, but you're a little scared. <laughs> I probably have seen a fancy Santa, um, but I'm going to need you to send me one in Discord, Nix. All right. Well, if we're going to have to tone this down so he's given less fan less fancy santa even if you made him blue all i would see is like a blue santa claus yeah and that's just ingrained in my brain because my mother has a ton of them she's got like a collection of blue santa clauses cuz that's huh. she's got someone i think i know who it is um but eh. for the longest time we thought it was her late father um, mm -hmm. but she's still receiving them, so I think it's dad doing it, <laughs> um, obviously, but he doesn't own up to it, and to be fair, he's a good liar, so even if he, even if he was the one doing it, we'd never know, um, but all I can see, like, if you were to make that blue, is like, okay, yeah, you've just changed the color of the Santa. <laughs> they're technically well. not Santa, they're Father Winter, you're right. But it's more fun to say Blue Santa. <laughs> so I'm going to throw some contrast paints on this. See if I can darken the red. And then kind of go from there while he's dry. And we'll head back to our frogs. Blue Santa has the same... Oh, no. Nyx is not as wrong as they should be, saying that Blue Santa has the same energy as Green Mario. They're not wrong, but they shouldn't say it. But it hurts they're out, me. They're, they're out of line. <laughs> it hurts me. And yellow fire trucks, yeah. Um, I think the fire trucks in my town are yellow. What, did they not get the memo? They, uh, there was a committee to decide on the color of the folders that presented the memo, and it never got out of committee, so I don't think they did. Well, that's darkened it up a bit. It's still very much Santa. Um, so I'm I'm going to move that over there for the time being. And I'm going to go paint some orange on this, this frog. Yes, my... <laughs> my itty-bitty municipality is backwards. Oh, I know. Just straight up still Santa. That's what I get for, for mentioning it. I shouldn't have said anything, and I could have gotten away with it. If it weren't for you pesky viewers and that producer, too. Yeah.
this orange is going to need like eight layers. <laughs> There's something about his eyeball that I'm looking at it, and it's just giving me, like, chocolate chip cookie vibes. Yeah. Um, That's I a think big the, eye. It is. It's a real big eye. You should come on and talk with me on voice chat sometime. But chat, you worry about chat being very lonely. Oh, yeah, Nix, my number's awful when you're not here. Eli is uh, being a very jealous boy right now. He keeps circling my office chair, and I've let him up a couple of times, but he's never satisfied. And now he's going to play with uh, a plastic bag that I left on the floor. <laughs> well, I am, I am glad that I am one of the only shows that you watch on Twitch. I'm sure 99.9% .9 of that reason is that we are friends in real life. What do you mean? Nix is here for me, not you. Oh, you know, actually, that's right. <laughs> they were they were here for me, episode one, and now it's just like the Nix and Elena hangout hour. And dang straight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here. I'm going to go back and clean that up, but trying to paint around this eye is a pain. But now it just looks like a, even more like a chocolate chip cookie, except more cookie now and less chip. Yeah, it's like some weirdo took out the chocolate chips. They just want a hint of chocolate. I, um, like I have seen <laughs> <laughs> the, La the LaCroix of chocolate. The LaCroix of cookies. It's like someone um, touched it with a chocolate chip. <laughs> I, um, I follow the uh, the baking subreddit because I like to bake when I'm not painting miniatures. Mm -hmm. Well, I say that, but I also haven't really baked in months. Um, Same. Actually, no, that's a lie. I, um, I baked a cheesecake a couple weekends ago. Um, yeah. Um, but... There was someone on that baking subreddit about a year, year and a half ago that made chipless chocolate chip cookies. So they took like the the standard like Nestle Toll House um, recipe and forgot to add the chips. Which is hilarious when you think about it because you normally get that recipe off of the bag of chips. And if you don't want your cookies to flatten, you've got to, like, refrigerate the dough. There's, like, eight steps where they could have added the chips. You know, I think about that and I go, okay, me burning my grilled cheese today was not that bad. <laughs> At least I didn't forget to add the chocolate chips from the bag I'm reading the recipe off of. So I, I did those uh, brownies a couple months ago. I forgot about that. Oh, man, now I would just want baked goods. I I am also in the same boat of I love to bake, but I haven't baked in a while. So for uh, the 24th, uh, my friends are having to get together at their house in Harrisburg where um, we're going to have a potluck. And I decided, well... Unless you want a bunch of sweets, tell people not to bring a lot of sweets because I'm bringing, uh, I'm bringing cupcakes. Oh, nice. And I'm going to try to make, I'm going to see how well it works, but I'm going to try to make two different types of cupcakes. And what I want to do is I want to make, uh, chocolate snack attacks, which are, um, chocolate, uh, it's chocolate cupcake base with, uh, pretzels and potato chips. And... Then chocolate frosting with um, crushed up potato chips, pretzels, and peanuts on top. And then for people who are allergic to peanuts, um, don't add the peanuts because it's just the peanuts on top. Uh, but the other part is uh, I want to do grapefruit cupcakes, which have uh, St. Germain's 
elderflower liqueur in it. Okay. Nice. So, um, those <sighs> grapefruit's not normally my thing, but the, those both sound really, really good. I really like grapefruit in special cases. <laughs> Fair. I am a big, big fan of citrus, though. Uh, lemon, lime, orange, gimme citrus all day long. It's my favorite. All right. Right underneath passion fruit, because passion fruit is also delicious. Lemon's my favorite, then it's passion fruit, and then it's every other citrus ever made. And then berries. Okay. I was about to say, where does yuzu sit on this list? Uh, I don't think I've ever had yuzu outside of it being, like, the ingredient or scent in, like, a soap. <laughs> That's fair. But... I just like regular old lemons. My friends think I'm insane because uh, I, like, they'll cut up a lemon for, like, whatever they needed lemon juice for and they wanted, like, uh, a bit of the pulp or, like, needed zest or whatever. And they think I'm insane because when they're done with it and there's, like, still, like, half a lemon left, I'm like, cut the other half, too. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm going to eat it. And they're like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, no, I, I will eat it. <laughs> Give me the sour. I do the same thing with limes. They, uh, we had Thai the last time my friends and I, um, hung out at, at, at the people who were doing the potluck's house. We went and got Thai food together and both of them didn't want their limes and I'm sitting there eating mine and they just like both look at me and then pass over their lime. No question asked. <laughs> <laughs> Almost sounds like, um... Almost sounds like uh, my wife with pickles. Oh, pickles are also delicious. I'm I'm not big on them. There's like two types of pickles that I like. So if I ever get anything that has a pickle on the side, right to her. Yep. Uh, Nix, how did you burn water trying to make dongo? I'm still trying to figure that out. The only thing I can think of is that they let the water boil out of the pot. Mm, mm -hmm. And so it just scalded the bottom. Oh. Oh. Did you add, let's see, wait, dongo. I mean, did you add, like, cornstarch? Yeah. It still looked like water. Yeah, that's the worst part. <laughs> Okay. It did not... Oh, that's not good. Good news. It did not pull up Take the primer. Bad news. <laughs> it's kind of melted to it. <laughs> yeah, it's alright. We're okay. I, um... My mother and I managed to burn chocolate as we were melting it. That's... And by burn, I mean catch it on fire. Okay, I was going to say... Mel burning chocolate really easy to do catching it on fire all right that takes skill so you know how like you can get melting wax yeah yeah we decided that because we had never done it before we ran out of chocolate and we wanted it to look glossy for our mounds bars that we were making for christmas and that's what the melting wax is for well uh we added some more chocolate and we added a little bit more melting wax and <laughs> fun fact flammable well i'll be yeah we didn't know that and my instinct so i'm gonna embarrass myself and i'll decide whether or not i cut this out in the uh in the edit, in the edit. <laughs> uh -huh. but i'll embarrass myself in front of all of you guys live on stream and for the next two weeks if you catch the vod but uh i it caught on fire in my initial instinct was flight so i took <laughs> off running out of the kitchen left my mother there with a burning pot of chocolate ran outside got outside took a couple of breaths and went oh my god i left my mother ran back inside to go help <laughs> i'm 15 okay so i didn't know what to do you know and... what though? that's that's the appropriate response yeah so i my mother still makes fun of me to this day. She's like, you left me to die in the house fire. And I'm like, yeah, I'd do it again. 
<laughs> but but we come so we get the fire you know put out we're we're cleaning up the pot uh, of all the burnt chocolate now and uh and we're we're having a laugh we're opening all of the winter uh, windows this is the middle of december and it's north carolina so it's not that cold outside but it's it's kind of chilly we turn on the uh the ceiling fan in the living room and my mom is the entire time my mom is just like now don't tell your father what happened okay like he doesn't need to know that we we caught something on fire and i'm like okay that's fine so so we close up all the windows after all the smoke is cleared and and all of that and uh we forgot to turn off the ceiling fan and that matters because my dad there's no smell now mm -hmm. i've got a hound dog nose like my father does and I, I couldn't smell any any hint that something like it smelled like something burnt, but it didn't smell like something caught on fire, which is great. And so uh, so we've like even cleaned cleaned up the towel that we used to put out the fire, you know, with water and everything to smother it. And so there's nothing, no sign whatsoever that that nothing was that anything w had happened. My dad comes in and sees the ceiling fan in the living room on because the, the front door opens into the living room. And he goes, so what happened? Did you guys catch something on fire? And I immediately spilled the beans faster than anything. It was like he put a gun to my head. <laughs> and my mom just goes, you betrayed me. You ran out the <laughs> house, leaving me in the fire. And now you're giving it up. <laughs> Where is your loyalty? <laughs> And I'm like, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I was afraid Dad was going to yell. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at 15, I would have been able, like, if I was kidnapped and I had any kind of sensitive information <laughs> that some spy needed, I would have given it up instantly. <laughs> I like to think I'm a little better now. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. I, um, I once, um, set tissue paper on fire in my house. <laughs> um, I was like, I don't know, 16. Um, it was definitely after I started playing Dungeons and Dragons because I had, um, I was using this box at, that I ended up lighting the tissue paper on fire in, um, as my dice box. And, so I lit it on fire because I was a bored, like, teenager. And it flew up into the air uh, because tissue paper plus heat um, made it lighter than air. And it just, you know, went up and up and up. And I was like, didn't catch the house on fire, thankfully. Um, but, boy, I was I was freaking out for a couple of hours. And I was like, I can't, my parents can't find out about this. Parents can't find out about this. Well, they didn't, um, thankfully. Um, but yeah, Whew. not as a thrilling story as yours, though. I have done a similar thing to you because I was a, a stupid 10 year old. Um, <laughs> same, same year. I also got very curious about the treadmill because I realized, I realize now that I don't think I had ever used a treadmill before, like e even going to the gym, like with my parents years, like when I was mm -hmm. smaller. So, uh, same year that I busted my knee on a treadmill and my, and I got a really nice scal uh, scolding talk from my grandfather about it. Don't <laughs> touch things. You don't know what they are. And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, but same year I did that. I, I, I did a very similar thing, with, but instead of tissue paper, I did it to paper napkins. Uh, I was hanging out in my grandmother's kitchen. I don't know what she was doing. She was maybe outside in the garden. Um, but I was bored, and I was like, I wonder how easy it is to catch this on. I, I, like, the only thing I could think of is, like, I had to have wondered how easy it was to catch this thing on fire. Or, like, how close can I get to the flame before it catches on fire or something. I don't know. <laughs> I literally have no idea. I was just smooth-braining it up. Um, and so there's, like, my grandmother has tons of candles, like, all over the house, and she always lights a couple um, and, and so I caught a, a tissue on fire and my, this time I didn't run, uh, 
I don't know why I was braver, maybe because I was the one who caught it on fire and not someone else, but I was braver apparently at 10 years old than I was at 15. Uh, and I take the, I took the, it, I, it caught on fire and it burned probably a fourth of the way through this paper napkin, still folded together. I didn't like, uh, unfold it or anything. So it wasn't burning like super quickly, but it burned about a fourth of the way through while I was running across the kitchen site. <laughs> Luckily I was in the kitchen when I like at the kitchen candle, but I ran across the kitchen, threw it into the, <laughs> into the sink and like just turned on the faucet and went, okay, so that's what happens. And then I threw it away and I like made sure that it didn't smell. And I never told my grandmother. I don't think she knows it happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, yeah, I was going to say, Jeff, do you mean uh, the, like, the red model, black model holder that I have, or this blue one? Um, unfortunately, the the Citadel ones, the, the red and the black one, are these are older styles. You can only find them secondhand now. Um, but this is a red grass um, model holder. So unfortunately, they're um, basically impossible to to uh, to come across now because Games Workshop went for like a thinner, smoother handle, um, which I like the heft of this one. So unfortunately, yeah, grippy dudes as we call them in uh in my house. It's the perfect name. It it really is. Um, I am gonna touch up this eyeball and get another layer of orange on this frog and the wizard is just about dry but we are also just about out of time for who, our brush hour session this week who knew today would be frogs santa claus and clerics right <laughs> Um, while, uh, while you were telling your story about, um, almost setting another house on fire, um... I'm good at this. Yeah, it's a marketable skill, honestly. <laughs> um, I, um, I started applying some gloss varnish to the blue, uh, frog, um, because I want to, I want it to kind of glisten and shine. Um, I may go and do it with the rest, like, do it on the base as well, um, but I think I may brush on some matte varnish um onto the um onto the uh the lily pads in the water um and just keep the frog glossy All right. yeah if um jeff you don't like you don't super need uh one of these grippy doos um, you can actually, if you have someone in your house that drinks wine, um, a cork from a wine bottle, um, and some blue sticky tack, that'll get you started. Um, that's, or you can use like a Coke bottle cap. Um, but these are, these are really much more of like a, a nice to have, but not a necessary you can also, if you don't have anybody who drinks wine, you can also get uh, corks pretty cheap at, like, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever craft yeah. shop you like to use. Yeah, I often forget that, like, because a lot of those stores are more than just, like, art supplies, um, you can get, like, wine corks for people that want, like, Instagrammable house shots. Yep. And so they'll have, like, a vase full of corks right next to something that says, like, live, laugh, love. I have a... Look, okay. I have a uh, jar full of full, full of corks, but it's because I was an alcoholic. <laughs> I was going to say, it is, hey, as long as, as, long as one, um, you, you collected them yourself, uh, and two, um, it's not next to um, a bouquet of peonies... Um, no. or <laughs> the, the, the cork, the, the cork bottle or, uh, container, uh, is also, I think, a Halloween decoration that I got, like, years ago from Target or something, and it's got, like, a label on it that says, like, 
vampire guts or something. <laughs> I forget Wonderful. what it says, but it's like it's a it's a Halloween. It's a Halloween <laughs> bottle. So I'm good on the no pe yeah. like no peonies, no geraniums <laughs> next to it, no live laugh love or the Sims equivalent of uh Lipa Liba Lure I think. <laughs> Just since I got some gloss varnish, I'm just going to put some on all of this, let this dry, and then I'll probably go over the rest with a matte varnish and leave the frog glossy. Um, but yeah, like I think, like my mother in law has a like a big bowl that sits um on her uh like co giant coffee table that she sets candles in, and it's got a bunch of wine corks. Um, so you know, I can always just go. Nick one if I need one. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I uh, I like the way um, if, if you've, like, I don't know if you've, have you gone to Trogues? No. Okay. So, um, so there's this brewery in Pennsylvania that's near Hershey. Um, I forget exactly where, but it's, it's called Dro Trogues. And they have these ales that are corked um instead oh. of like the normal metal bottle cap mm -hmm. and the way when you pop them out like the way they look when they expand is super cool uh so honestly i was like collecting those because i just thought they were neat and then i was gonna make like uh earrings out of them at one point <laughs> and i never did Sounds like a sick idea yeah uh, all right um I think that does just about does it for us tonight. Um, like I said, I'm going to finish the cleric's base later, but he's painted. Our thief is painted. Santa's a work in progress. Um, <laughs> and I got a couple of frogs painted and varnished. Um, we are not here next week uh, or the week after, right? I'm here yeah, the 5th we're... and the 26th. Yeah, this is the this is a weird month. Uh, we had to move <laughs> some shows around, so uh, so you are not back until the end of the month. That's all right. Um, next Monday is Mauve Mike, or just something Mike is doing in general. Okay. Um, so if you want to know like what's happening with DCC, um, or any Goodman Games products, um, also it is Zine Quest. Um, so if you are on Kickstarter or Backer Kit, a lot of um, really cool um, zines are up and looking for funding. Um, there is, uh, I've only backed one, uh, there, mostly because there's a lot out there and funds are, I'm saving up for Gary Khan. Um, but um, Father Goose, uh, who I don't know when uh, fa the Fabulators is got season two yet. But he did a Twitch show where he made a bunch of patrons and deities with people. Um, I'm on a couple of uh, those episodes. Um, but he's got a zine out right now that he's looking for funding for. Um, for, like, pulp action and a little bit more swords and wizardry for DCC. Um, but yeah, if you just go to Kickstarter, check out Zine Quest. Um, you'll see a bunch of really cool DCC creators and old school RPG creators in general. Uh, Mob Mike is next Monday. Um, and... Purple um, planet people. Oh yeah, I completely forgot. Um, so one of the uh like hardest to come by DCC series of adventures because it was only a box set forever ago is um the Purple Planet. Uh, that's what DCC eighty four or eighty five. Um, and a bunch of sub numbers related to that is launching on Backer Kit tomorrow. Um, noon Eastern, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, so noon Eastern. Um, they're gonna. You guys are doing a Twitch show for that as well. Yes, sir. Um, so stop by, check it out. Um, Purple and, Planet is super cool. And there's a ton of Purple Planet horde out there. So not only do you have the Purple Planet box uh, box set that's going to be going on, you've also got a ton of people who are working in tandem, uh, doing zero level to fourth level, I believe. Uh, ed or it's either zero to third or zero to fourth level adventures. So you've got like Ed Stanick from Ray Oregon Games, um, the Gaming Honors crew, uh, Studio Nine, uh, Tim uh, Tim Satley. Tim or... Satley's doing one, yeah. Um, There's like 
eight, seven or eight creators. Yeah, Purple Sorcerer is doing uh, doing something. Roll Funky Dice is doing something. Uh, James Pozzanel is doing something. So, like, a ton of people are working on on extra stuff that you can also back in tandem with the box set. And if they all get funded, you also get drop-in encounters with uh, with all of those things. So, yeah, watch out cool. for that tomorrow. Um, and I guess with that, uh, I will see you all on uh, February 26th for another brush hour where we will continue to paint Santa. Uh, <laughs> um, it cannot be it, unseen. It, yeah, it can't. It, I, I'm going to have to get some like 3D printed gifts to put on his base. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you all had a, a good night. Uh, thanks for hanging out and watching us and I'll see you next time.